Trent Tucker with 16 points. Mitchell comes out. Zeb Howell is back in for Minnesota. 2.34 remaining. Substitution for more size inside. 17 points for Trent Tucker. 2.28 to play, 61-56 Minnesota. Purdue won both games last year in the Big Ten competition for the Gophers. Minnesota's a 1-2-2 zone now. Wilbury Carroll is fouled by Kevin McHale, and that's number four on McHale. Ball goes into Joe Barry Carroll. He looks, turns, fades. Kevin McHale goes up with him, gets him right on the arm with his left hand. 22 points for number 22. Kevin McHale now carrying four fouls. Joe Barry with a soft touch, rings the bell with number 23. He is near his seasonal average, 24.9. 61-57, Minnesota. Big rebound. Cleared out of there by Zeb Howell. Again, the two-on-one fast break. Broke it up. Barry Carroll right in the middle. Uh, Talk about big guys moving down the floor. Yeah, but a little guy's the one who made the play. Yep. 2.06 to play. 61-57. Arnett Hallman. Brian Walker. Britt Morris. Up the baseline. In and out. Kevin McHale rebound. Minnesota with the ball, we're under the two-minute mark. 61-57 Minnesota. The Golden Gophers trying to get their fourth one of the year in Big Ten competition. Purdue coming into this one, four and one. Minnesota three and two in league play. An anxious Jim Dutcher watching his team work the clock, handle the ball. Mark Hall, who didn't score in the first half, has been a big score in this half. Steve, uh, Walker missed taking it away, Brian Walker. Minute 20 seconds left in the game. The Gophers are killing the clock. One minute, eight seconds left to play. Now, we've got a foul. We're a minute away from the end of the ball game. And right now, Minnesota, 61-57 lead, just working the clock, and finally a foul is called against the Boilermakers. So, at the free throw line go the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Lee Rose, the head coach of Purdue, now asks for a timeout. He wants to talk it over. Minnesota 61 and Purdue 57. We'll be right back. You know, one of the best things about coming to America was that I got to try American beers, and I tried them all. The one I like best, light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling, and it really tastes great. That's why I tell my friends from Mexico, when you come to America, drink light beer, but don't drink the water. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. What's so the IBM Series 3 copier? Easy. At the touch of a button, it can make a same size copy. Or a reduced size copy. It can copy on one side of your paper, or two. If you want lots of copies. It's fast. And the quality of the IBM Series 3 copier is so good, it's hard to tell the copy from the original. Say goodnight, George. Good night, George. See the amazing runs, the great catches, and the bone-jarring hits as Sports World recaps the 79 NFL season tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern on NBC. With 54 seconds left to play, Minnesota has a 61-57 to lead. Minnesota led the half by 34 to 29, led by as many as nine in the first half, by as many as nine in the second half. But the Boilermakers have never given up. They've just kept coming back. But right now, you look at that clock and look at the score and look at Holmes going to the free throw line. Very difficult task ahead for the Boilermakers. And Merle, as we've said many times, when that clock is stopped and you're on the line, you better be adding to your score. And Purdue has to gamble. They have to foul. And really many, many of 
Minnesota players are good free throwers. I suppose you'd say Mark Hall at 70% is one of the, the poorer free throwers, and Zeb Howell at 577. And Gary Holmes is on the line as a 78% free throw shooter, and he hits the first one. That's three points for him. Gary is out of Miami, Florida. Had his best game of the year Thursday night against Ohio State. 62-57 Gophers. It's tough to win on the road in the Big Ten. 63-57 Minnesota, 52 seconds. Stallings, Hallman, Edmondson. Valuable time going. Stallings getting the ball up. Off the rim. Hallman, a great follow, and he's got it. Arnett Hallman. 18 points for Hallman and a timeout called. And we have a timeout call for Purdue. 38 seconds left. Minnesota 63-59 over the Boilermakers. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank some fine people here at the University of Minnesota for their help today. Athletic Director Paul Giel, Assistant Bob Gary, Head Basketball Coach Jim Dutcher, and his two assistants, Jimmy Williams and Jesse Evans, and Sports Information Director Bob Peterson and his assistant Tom Greenhoe. And from Purdue, Athletic Director George King and his staff, Head basketball coach Lee Rose and his assistants, Everett Bass and Billy Keller, and sports information director Tom Shoup, along with his assistant Paul Jensen, who is here today with the Boilermakers. Our special thanks to our statisticians, Tom Greenhoe Jr. and Larry Peterson. I'd like to recognize the fine work of our director, Jim Holmes, producer Scott Kane, stage manager Chuck Frankel, and our thanks to Jeff Elliott, our Big Ten coordinator. Also, we'd like to express our appreciation for the fine production crew from WTCN Television, our NBC affiliate here in the Twin Cities, for their fine camera work. 38 seconds remaining, Minnesota 63, and Purdue 59. Remember, next Saturday afternoon, we will be at Northwestern for the Michigan Wildcat Battle, 3.30 Eastern Time. I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, Rich Falk has got those Wildcats going. And they've been in just about every game they've played so far, and they get a little enthusiasm generated around there. I think it'll make a lot of difference. Oh, they got a tough one tonight with Indiana. That will be a good one. It is a sellout. The Wildcats are really attracting a lot of interest in the Chicago area, and that is really great. They played fine ball, exciting basketball. Minnesota with the ball. Here they come again, trying to beat Purdue down the floor. Walker fouls, Trent Tucker. Brian Walker, his third foul. Tucker will go to the free throw line. Sorry, it was a good foul. There's only three seconds went off the clock. Lee Rose. Going to send Stallings back into the game. Kevin Stallings, number 32. 6'5", sophomore, into the ball game, and well, going out is Brian Walker. Steve Walker is in there for defensive purposes. Now that the ball's been turned over, then he gets Kevin Stallings back in the shooters. Tucker on a one and one Joe Barry Carroll rebounds. Edmondson, 32 seconds left. Purdue's got to get the ball up. 63-59. Stallings does it. And it goes down, up, and are finally down through. Another timeout is called. 21 seconds left to play, and Minnesota's lead is at two as Lee Rose has a plan. Well, he got the timeout, give him a chance to come back and, and do something defensively, maybe a little differently than they did it the last time. The last gamble paid off. I'm talking about uh, the, the free throw being missed, but that's the only chance he has now if, he, if you know, if Purdue does not steal the inbounds pass. Well, there is the strategy being discussed right there in the Purdue huddle. See the amazing runs, the great catches, and the bone-jarring hits as Sports World looks at the upsets and underdogs, hot dogs and heroes of the 1979 NFL season. That's tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern on NBC. 21 seconds to go. Tomorrow on NBC, you're going to see LSU and DePaul in a national game. You'll see the Blue Demons, who are ranked number one of the nation, against the LSU Tigers, who have been ranked as high as fifth this year in the national polls. And a great scoring duo of sophomore Mark McGuire and Duran Macklin of LSU. That'll be tomorrow on NBC. 
21 seconds left. Minnesota 63, Purdue 62. Minnesota led by as many as nine in this half. You've got to admire these Boilermakers. Right, Minnesota has all five people up in the backcourt here now. All right, here we go. Hallman fouls Mitchell. 17 seconds left. Mitchell is an 83% free throw shooter. Jim Dutcher is looking. And he is sending Randy Bauer back into the ball game. Here he comes. Mark Hall will go to the sideline. He wants the big guys in there now to control that board. Seventeen seconds left. Minnesota has a two-point lead. Yes, it's an important free throw. Oh, I reckon. Three-point lead for Minnesota. Seven points for Darrell Mitchell. Four-point lead, Minnesota. 17 seconds to play. Well, Purdue has to hurry down. 14 seconds. Got to get it up. Drake Morris. Hallman. Block rejected by McHale. What a defensive effort by McHale. And now a foul is called on Drake Morris. <laughs> well, you saw it all right there, everything that happened. I was really spectating. I was watching both coaches up. Oh, you were right in the game, Fred. <laughs> you coached too many years not to be involved in a situation like this. <laughs> I believe we had two whistles. And we have just been, Bill Bova just said, first whistle. Right. So let's see what the first call was. I think the ball, someone stepped out of bounds over there. Now it's being explained to Lee Rose. He just came over, he said, first whistle. So there were two whistles, and you can obviously can't hear at this stage. It's Bedlam here in Minnesota. There's the time. That's the whole story right there. Four-point lead Minnesota, six seconds for Minnesota to protect the lead. The crowd doesn't understand, though, because a foul had been called on the second whistle. Again, an explanation for Lee Rose. Six, second remain, six seconds remain. Here we go. It will be Purdue's ball. They gain the ball on the first whistle. But there can be no, no, now Minnesota's going to call timeout to make sure that each one of those, of their players, do not foul, know exactly the role they're to play in this situation. Because you know that if the basket is scored, Purdue will call timeout. Well, the strategists go to work again here at Williams Arena at the University of Minnesota. This is the kind of game we're expecting. I don't think anybody's surprised at the closeness of it or really the way that the game has been played. We were expecting both teams to go to zones defensively. They did. They switched to man-to-man -man from time to time. And uh, right now, with a four-point lead, Minnesota discussing the situation. How do you hold a four-point lead with six seconds to play? It doesn't sound hard, but well, it might be. Uh, Purdue has used its last time out. So they're, they're really between a rock and a hard place now, even if they score. Uh, the only thing that could really uh, work in their favor would be if, if uh, Minnesota would commit a foul and stop the clock. Okay. Down to the last six seconds. Minnesota, which has won 10 and lost four, three and two of the Big Ten. Purdue 11 and three overall, four and one of the Big Ten. And it's going to be that kind of a race all year in the Big Ten Conference this season. The Big Ten really walloped the non-conference opposition. And they had five teams in the top 20 when the season, Big Ten season opened. 
Edmondson. Shot blocked. Taking away by Minnesota. Three seconds left. Mitchell leads. Trent Tucker scores at the buzzer. Trent Tucker scored at the buzzer, and Minnesota has beaten Purdue by six as Tucker comes up with his 19th point of the ball game. It really wasn't the deciding factor, but it was the icing on the cake. And the final score, Minnesota 67 and Purdue 61. Here are the people who have made it possible today working behind the scenes. Hope you enjoy the ball game. Next week, it'll be Michigan at Northwestern at 3.30 Eastern Time. Merle Harmon, Fred Taylor, so long from Minnesota.